June 18, 2025. Mount Etna was quiet until seismic alarms began pulsing beneath the surface. A lone volcanologist on the night shift watched rising tremors, unaware that magma was surging toward the surface faster than anyone predicted. Hours later, an explosive eruption would ground flights, unleash toxic clouds, and send fresh lava toward Sicilian cities. But even the most advanced instruments could not explain the warning signs that slipped through undetected. Why did the world's best monitoring miss the signals that changed everything? Deep beneath Mount Etna, the first hints of unrest came not with fire, but through a silent pulse, volcanic tremor. At 9 p.m. UTC on June 18th, seismic instruments began to register a steady climb in amplitude. For volcanologists, this was not just background noise. Tremor is the mountain's heartbeat, a low, continuous vibration that betrays the movement of magma through ancient fractures and new cracks. Each rise and fall in the signal offers clues about what is happening out of sight, far below the summit. Inside the observatory, the night shift scientist watched the live graphs with growing attention. Tremor amplitude, measured in real time, crept higher in a pattern that suggested pressure was building. Not a sudden spike, but a gradual, relentless increase. These signals are subtle, often masked by wind, rain, or distant earthquakes. But on this night, the pattern was unmistakable. The mountain was restless. By midnight, the graphs showed a pronounced change. The tremor, once fluctuating, began to stabilize at a higher intensity. This shift often means that magma is forcing open a more direct pathway, breaking through resistance in the rock. For those trained to read these signals, the data pointed to a system under stress. The instruments did not reveal exactly where the magma would surface or when, but they left little doubt that something was happening underground. At 2 a.m. UTC, the tremor pattern changed again. The signal grew stronger, more coherent, as if the mountain had found a single open conduit. Then, at 2.40 a.m. UTC, the amplitude surged to its highest level yet. In the language of volcano monitoring, this was a clear warning. Magma was rising, pressure was peaking, and the surface could soon give way. For the scientist on duty, Every line on the screen represented a potential timeline. Tremor is a warning system, but it is not a clock. It tells you that magma is on the move, but not how fast or where it will break through. In moments like these, the gap between what the instruments reveal and what nature intends becomes painfully clear. The countdown had begun, but the precise hour of eruption remained hidden in the noise of the mountain's restless heart. At 2325 Coordinated Universal Time, a sharp seismic signature appeared on the observatory's monitoring dashboard. The duty volcanologist, alone in the control room, caught the sudden spike, a pattern that had not shown itself all night. The room was quiet except for the hum of machines and the faint tick of the wall clock, but the screens told a different story. Every instrument was calibrated for nights like this, when Etna's silence could end in a heartbeat. The protocol for after-hours alerts is simple. Confirm, escalate, document. First, the scientist cross-checked the signal, making sure it was not a false reading from wind or distant quakes. The tremor curve, however, was unmistakable, rising fast and steady, unlike the background noise logged earlier. Within minutes, an internal alert went out to the regional monitoring network. Automated systems flagged the anomaly and pushed notifications to staff on call and senior officials in Catania. Night shifts at the observatory run lean. One volcanologist, a backup technician on standby, and a skeleton crew of remote analysts keep watch over a mountain that rarely sleeps. When the first alarm sounded, there was no time for debate. The scientist logged the event, annotated the dashboard, and began a rapid scan of auxiliary data. Gas emissions, thermal cameras, infrasound. Each channel offered a piece of the puzzle, but none contradicted the seismic warning. 
The mountain was stirring, and the evidence was stacking up. Standard procedure demanded a preliminary hazard assessment. The scientists drafted a short report, time-stamped and transmitted to the Italian Civil Protection Department. The language was measured but urgent. Elevated tremor detected, potential for surface activity, monitoring ongoing. Within the hour, backup staff began making their way to the observatory, preparing for a possible escalation as the night wore on. Instruments across the network continued to feed data in real time. The tremor amplitude, now plotted across multiple stations, showed a coherent pattern. Pressure was rising beneath the southeast crater. The night shift volcanologist kept one eye on the live feeds, the other on the phone, ready to relay updates if the situation changed. Each minute that passed without a drop in the signal brought the possibility of eruption closer. By now, the observatory's alert protocols had shifted the institution into a higher state of readiness. Contingency plans for aviation alerts, public advisories, and coordination with emergency services were reviewed. The scientist on duty was no longer just an observer, but the first link in a chain of decisions that could affect thousands. For the moment, though, the only certainty was the relentless climb of the tremor graph a silent alarm echoing through the dark, waiting for daylight to reveal what was happening above ground. At first light on June 19, 2025, the landscape around Mount Etna changed in a matter of minutes. Lava, glowing and relentless, began to pour from the southeast crater. The flow traced a path down the northeast flank, carving through old ash fields and moving steadily toward the Valle del Leone. Field mapping analysts tracked the front as it advanced, noting its progress at roughly 1,930 meters elevation, with the main channel stretching nearly four kilometers by the end of the morning. The terrain here is steep and scarred by decades of eruptions, but this new river of molten rock showed no hesitation, following gravity's pull through gullies and over ridges that had been quiet for years. But the story did not end with a single flow. As the morning wore on, a second breach opened along the southeast rim. This new vent began to feed its own lava stream, branching away from the first and threatening a wider area. Analysts in the field and at the observatory scrambled to update hazard maps, tracing the possible paths as the second flow picked up speed. The mountain, it seemed, was no longer content with a single outlet. Multiple vents meant that pressure underground had found more than one escape route. Amplifying the hazard for anyone living or working on Etna's southern slopes. The dual flows presented a complex challenge for those tasked with monitoring the crisis. The main river continued to push east, while the newer branch angled further south, its advance less predictable. Each hour, the margin of safety for nearby communities narrowed. Even seasoned volcanologists, familiar with Etna's restless behavior, recognized the danger in this pattern. A single vent can be monitored, its path modeled and watched. Two or more opening in quick succession force a recalculation of risk, especially when the terrain channels lava toward inhabited zones. By midday, the combined length of the active flows exceeded what most had expected at the start of the eruption. Satellite imagery and drone surveys confirmed the expansion, capturing the moment when Etna's internal pressure reshaped not just the summit, but the mountain's entire eastern and southeastern flanks. For the analysts on the ground, every new branch was a potential threat line, a reminder that Etna's eruptions rarely follow a script. The physical spread of lava, driven by the mountain's own shifting architecture, set the stage for a crisis that would test the limits of monitoring and response. At sunrise, Mount Etna's eruption was no longer just a local crisis. Volcanic ash shot upward, forming a dense column that climbed to 6,000 meters, well into the cruising altitude of commercial jets. Within minutes, European aviation authorities issued a red aviation code, the highest possible alert. Airspace across the central Mediterranean shifted from routine to restricted. Pilots received urgent rerouting orders as the ash plume drifted north, 
carried by high-altitude winds toward busy flight corridors. For airport coordinators in Sicily and southern Italy, the situation demanded immediate action. Catania's control tower tracked the plume's trajectory, updating pilots and ground staff as conditions changed. Some flights were grounded outright, while others diverted hundreds of kilometers to avoid the invisible hazard. Ash in a jet engine can melt into glass, coating turbine blades and threatening catastrophic failure. The risk is not just theoretical. Past eruptions have forced emergency landings and left aircraft stranded far from their destinations. The threat extended beyond the sky. Instruments on the volcano's slopes and satellite sensors orbiting overhead detected a surge of sulfur dioxide gas, invisible but potent. As the ash cloud spread northward, so did the sulfur dioxide, mixing with fine particles and creating a toxic haze. Public health officials monitored air quality in downwind communities, aware that even low levels of volcanic gas can, tr can trigger respiratory distress, especially in children and the elderly. For many Sicilians, the sharp smell of sulfur in the morning air was the first warning that the eruption was more than a distant spectacle. The combined ash and gas cloud did not respect borders. By midday, reports of hazy skies and falling ash came from towns as far as Randazzo, 15 kilometers to the north, and Gioiosa Marea, nearly 50 kilometers away. Emergency bulletins circulated through local radio and social media, advising residents to stay indoors and limit outdoor activity. For those living under the plume, Etna's eruption felt immediate and personal, a reminder that a single volcanic event can disrupt lives, commerce, and travel far beyond the mountain's shadow. As the day wore on, the crisis moved from ground to sky and back again. Scientists and civil protection officials tracked the evolving plume, adjusting forecasts as new data arrived. The eruption had begun as a tremor deep underground, but its consequences now stretched across airspace, cities, and the daily routines of thousands. Mount Etna's reputation as one of the world's most closely watched volcanoes rests on a web of sensors, each tuned to catch the faintest hint of movement, pressure, or sound. Yet, as the June 2025 eruption unfolded, the confidence in these instruments was quietly tested. On the slopes, tilt meters and strain gauges began registering subtle ground shifts. At Punta Lucia, readings climbed by 0.2 micro radians, while at Monte Ruvolo, strains stretched to 106 nano strain. These numbers, though tiny, spoke volumes to the analysts. Rock was bending, the mountains swelling, magma pushing upward. For those in the control room, the data felt urgent. A warning whispered through stone, but not every instrument agreed. The Permanent Global Navigation Satellite System, or GNSS, designed to detect even millimeter scale changes across the volcano's flanks, showed nothing unusual. No swelling, no measurable displacement, just a flat line where a spike was expected. This contradiction left engineers and scientists in a bind. Was the deformation too localized for GNSS to catch? Or was something masking the signal, noise, geometry, or a subtle flaw in the network's coverage? In volcanology, these gaps are not just technical puzzles. They can mean the difference between timely alerts and missed danger. Complicating matters further, Infrasound sensors picked up a sharp acoustic surge. At 9.30 coordinated universal time, the volcano's explosive gas releases, silent to human ears, sent low-frequency waves rippling through the air, captured only by specialized microphones. Interpreting these signals requires cross-checking with seismic and deformation data. But with the global navigation satellite system silent, the true scale and location of the underground movement remained uncertain. Technical failures compounded the confusion. Some data streams lagged or dropped out entirely, leaving analysts to piece together the story with partial evidence. The sensitivity of each instrument, what it could see, 
and what it might miss became painfully clear. In moments like these, the illusion of complete surveillance gave way to the reality of uncertainty. The network's blind spots forced scientists to make judgment calls with incomplete information, knowing that every minute lost could raise the stakes for those living in Etna's shadow. Catania sits just 30 kilometers from Etna's summit, its rooftops and crowded streets now lying under a haze of volcanic ash. The city's residents watch the mountain with a mixture of routine and dread. For many, this is not the first time life has been disrupted by Etna's unpredictable moods. Shops close early, windows are sealed against the fine grit that settles everywhere, and schools debate whether to open the next morning. Yet despite the growing concern, no official evacuation order has been issued. Not for Catania, not for Messina, not for the smaller towns and villages scattered along the slopes. The decision weighs heavily on local authorities, who must balance the risks of panic against the uncertainties in the data. Civil protection officers review hazard maps and consult with scientists, but the answers remain elusive. The mountain's past is full of close calls. In 1669, lava reached Catania's city walls after weeks of relentless advance destroying villages in its path. More recently, eruptions have cut off roads or forced temporary closures, but widespread evacuations are rare. The calculus is never simple. Thresholds for action are defined by law and experience, but nature rarely follows the rules. One officer, standing by a bank of emergency radios, admits that the hardest part is not knowing when a routine eruption might tip into disaster. Residents, meanwhile, rely on local news, social media, and the familiar cues of falling ash and distant rumbles. Some families pack bags just in case. Others trust that the mountain will spare them once again. Scientists continue to debate what the latest patterns mean, but for those living in Etna's shadow, uncertainty is the only constant. The city waits, caught between ancient memory and the unsettling possibility that this time the warnings might not be enough. Mount Etna stands as a living reminder, even with the most advanced monitoring, nature's unpredictability outpaces our uncertainty. Today, more than 900,000 people live within reach of its shifting flows, and each eruption redraws the line between safety and risk. The next decision may arrive without warning. How closely are we listening? Share your thoughts below.